Bulevinaka and a warm welcome to Speak Your Mind. I'm Louise Kaunisela and this is your only classic hit station in the country, Gold FM. My guest today has been described as a hard worker and a people person. He has 25 years experience in human capital and corporate services management, having held senior executive positions in the tourism and beverage sectors in the country. The Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation CEO, Kameli Mbatiweti, thank you for taking out the time to be on Speak Your Mind today. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, we'll, we'll go straight to my first question. Could you give us a brief history of the Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation and the role it plays, please? Thank you, Luis. Um, Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation uh, was uh, started in September 1960. And so last year, in September last year, 2020, we celebrated 60 years of existence uh, as a federation. And uh, what the uh, employer's rep had uh, started as a industrial relations uh, unit, has evolved over the years to now human resources, and then most recently to commerce and economic development. And so over the years also, the membership have grown uh, as the uh, years keep ticking. Huh? Mm -hmm. mm. And so our role in the uh, Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation uh, we, our key role is to advocate and lobby uh, on behalf of our members with uh, our key stakeholders, and the number one key stakeholder uh, is government. And we also have other regulatory authorities and agencies like FRCS, um, FNPF, the Immigration uh, Department, FRA, LTA, just to name a few. Okay. And so the members would come to us with some of their concerns, uh, some of the issues that they're facing with um, running uh, the ease of doing business in Fiji. Mm -hmm. And we approach the relevant authorities on their behalf. Thank you. Lovely explanation. It's good to know. Now, how many members does the Fiji Employees and Commerce Federation have now compared to when the pandemic first began? Well, I can say that uh, over it's now just a little under 400 members that we have now. Mm -hmm. And so during the pandemic uh, time, there have been some new members who have joined us. Okay. Yes, and uh, it's just as I had mentioned earlier, uh, our advocacy and lobbying mm -hmm. uh, that we do on, the beh on behalf of our members, that is what is attracting uh, membership. And so these members join and, you know, the cost of being a member uh, is very attractive for them uh, in comparison to the, to the benefits that they derive mm -hmm. uh, from being a member. And so it pales into insignificance when uh, you compare what you pay as a member mm -hmm. and the benefits that you derive uh, as a member. And so maybe I'll, I'll talk a bit about FCEF. Uh, we are the National Private Sector Organization uh, in Fiji, and we uh, represent all employers on the tripartite forum. So the tripartite involves government. Mm -hmm. It involves the workers' representative, uh, which is the Fiji Trade Union's Congress. And we come from the employers uh, perspective. We are uh, members of the uh, International Organization of Employers, so that's an association that's based out of, uh, uh, based out in uh, Europe. We provide training and development for our members. Mm. Uh, yeah, we provide training and development. We also, if there's a training that's not available locally, mm -hmm. we source it from our counterparts overseas and uh, we zoom it in now. We provide industrial relations and human resources consultancy, and so we have a unit within uh, FCEF that is industrial relations. We disseminate information, so any information we have, we disseminate it to our members. We also conduct survey and we have information sessions where we invite uh, organizations like FRCS as an example when they are ready to roll out a new initiative, they would come and 
and roll it out to our members in our office. We have uh, business networking opportunities. There are monthly council meetings. Uh, we have a quarterly combined council meetings. So there are 10 councils in total wow. uh, with, with FSEF. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first council is, and it's in no particular order, we have a retailers council, we have a mining and quarrying council, a professional and financial services council, human resources council, manufacturing trade and export council. Uh, we have a tourism and transport council. We have a women entrepreneurs and business council. So this is made up of women uh, MSMEs, uh, and it is one of our most active councils uh, in the Federation. We also have a Youth Entrepreneurs Council for youth who are 40 years and under. And uh, just a couple of years ago, the Honorable Prime Minister uh, started the Business Disaster Resilience Council uh, with the Federation. And the last one just recently started last year is the Business Process Outsourcing Council, mm -hmm. which has one of the greatest potential to... Uh, grow the economy in Fiji. That's wonderful. Thank you for the explanation. Now, you said you have uh, under 400 members. Uh, yes. Would you like more? Is there able to, are you able to have more members? That is the, the, the objective. Um, there's power in numbers. When uh, the members come together and we form a federation uh, or an association, it, it allows us a lot of uh, clout in terms of representation, uh, when we uh, write our position papers, it would, because of the numbers that we possess, would add a lot of credence to the uh, discussion papers that we would put to our stakeholders. Okay, so I mean, if uh, someone was listening in now, or maybe watching the delayed coverage on FBC TV, I mean, I'm sure you would encourage them uh, to become a member of uh, the Fiji Commerce, uh, yes? yes? So we have to come back to that uh, yes. soon on Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. On Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're your only classic hit station in the country. Be sure to tune in to our station. Now, today is always the day for our live radio show, and uh, I have the honor of having the CEO of the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation telling us uh, all about uh, FSEF. And, uh, you know, before we went into the break, you know, I said that uh, you you look into having more members uh, for their benefit. Yes. I mean, you've already mentioned in the first segment uh, the many things that you carry out. So maybe just uh, quickly why, why you would encourage someone to become a member of uh, FSEF. Thank you, Luis. Um, it's important that when we work together that we are able to achieve a lot more together. Uh, that's why the acronym of TEAM is Together Everyone Achieves More. Mm. And so, on their own, they will achieve some things, uh, but it is not uh, like when they come together and as an employer's uh, group that we are able to achieve more together. And so, we, we strongly encourage them to reach out to us. Our phone number is 331-3188, mm -hmm. and we'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that they have in regards to becoming a member. Some people think that becoming a member of Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation is a huge task and it's a big boys club. No, we cater for any um, uh, category of employers in Fiji. We uh, work with those who have 2,000 employees mm -hmm. and we work with those who have two employees or one employee. And so we cater for a whole spectrum of, of employer uh, companies that would like to come and be a member of Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation. Vinaka, so how many employees uh, have members of the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation had to let go of uh, since the start of the pandemic last year? Okay, thank you. Good question. Um, in uh, May, June, end of May, beginning of June last year, we 
with the assistance of the International Labour Organization, their office out of Bangkok, they uh, commissioned a rapid assist, uh, assessment survey. Mm -hmm. And so the office in Suva here uh, financed our uh, workers to go out to our members. So of the uh, 400 uh, members that we had, we were able to uh, uh, survey 271 members. Mm -hmm. And of the 271 members, 42, 000, they had a total headcount of 42,000 employees. Oh dear, that's a lot. Yeah, and so the assessment revealed, mm. so that includes the hospitality, some of the hospitality industry employers, uh, the uh, assessment uh, revealed that of the 42,000, 29,000 was laid off and uh, only 13,000 was retained. Mm -hmm. And so that is, just to answer your question, mm -hmm. uh, 29,000 uh, out of the 271 employee, employers that were um, interviewed and assessed, that was the number of employees that was let go. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much. So we'll move on to my next question. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, you have something coming up and uh, I'd like uh, you to tell me, what is the top executive uh, conference? Okay. Thank you. It, the acronym is Top X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Top X. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so Top X, as you correctly pointed out, is uh, short for Top Executive Conference. It's scheduled for the 28th and 29th of May 2021, mm -hmm. and uh, it's at the Sofitel Resort and Spa on Danarao Island, and so. The people who will be attending are mainly the leadership team members in each organization. So the leadership involves the CEO mm -hmm. or the managing director and his or her direct reports. Mm -hmm. Also, there will be some whom the uh, leadership team members would like to, as part of their succession plan, introduce them to a high-profile uh, um, conference as such. Mm -hmm. And they all attend to listen to very experienced uh, speakers who, uh, who will speak on the updated uh, topics that are relevant to their industries. And so we are covering a lot of industry. We are covering export. We are covering manufacturers, retailers, uh, professional uh, sectors. And therefore, uh, the speakers, there are two international speakers who are going to speak. One is from Washington and one is from New York. And so we will be listening. So we'll start off with a bang. And uh, the first session after our chief guest uh, opens the session, the session one immediately after the chief guest's uh, opening will be uh, on the looking at the uh, international outlook, so the global economic outlook mm -hmm. and we will also be listening to the speaker who will speak on the domestic the fijian economic uh, outlook and to see what has happened what is currently happening and what's being forecasted to happen come the future that will give our people uh, the participants and the delegates uh, an indication of what to expect mm. uh, in the la next 12 months at least 18 24 given the last 12 months uh, that has uh, passed us. And so we'll, that's the start, mm -hmm. and then we'll end on Saturday. Uh, our last session will involve uh, the, a um, guru in the tourism industry, one of the, uh, uh, if I may use the word, big boys in the tourism industry, who's going to speak on what the tourism hospitality industry would be expecting. Uh, as soon as the borders open, mm -hmm. and what to prepare now. And hopefully they'll give an, uh, an example of the experience that the there's one or two island, Pacific Island countries that are now opening up their bubble with New Zealand. Yeah. And so what are some of the learnings that we can uh, uh, glean from the experience that they are facing? Obviously, one of the areas that uh, the hospitality industry will be focusing is on the retraining of their employees to prepare them for uh, when guests do come in internationally. Lo fortunately, uh, the government introduced uh, last year 
the Love Your Local campaign. Mm. And so we are uh, very grateful to the people from uh, Suva and all these other areas that seemingly aren't affected by this pandemic, yeah. uh, that they go and uh, spend their time in the resorts and ho hotels in the West. So that keeps them thinking over uh, for the time being until the borders do open. Excellent. Thank you very much. Interesting indeed. And we'll be back for more on Speak Your Mind. Gold FM, only the classic hit. Stay with us. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. I hope you're enjoying the program. My guest is from the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, the CEO, Kameli Batiweti, and uh, just telling us about uh, the upcoming conference, which is Top X. So, I mean, it was really good to know that, uh, you know, you have this happening because at least there's a clearer picture of what to expect in the future, what's happened in the past, and what's currently happening. So how many applicants are expected to register for the top executive TOPEX conference in Nandi? Thank you, Luis. Uh, we are expecting um, at least 200 uh, delegates to attend the session on the 28th and 29th of May 2021. Okay. So how can or would be or interested people be a part of the Top X conference? Is there a fee? How much? Yes. Um, first, they can get in touch with us on 331-3188 if they would like to find out the details and uh, speak to someone. Mm -hmm. Or they can go onto our website, uh, FCCEF website, mm -hmm. uh, and to download and to uh, access the frequently asked questions. Uh, that are there. For those who are our members, mm -hmm. uh, the fee is $1,000 mm -hmm. uh, for the two days. Uh, and so that $1,000 includes morning and afternoon tea, lunch, and uh, the uh, actual conference. Yeah. If you're not a member, you pay $2,000 mm -hmm. uh, to, to attend the conference. Now, those fees do not include accommodation. Mm -hmm. uh, if they want to include accommodation, we'd be happy to organize that for them with Sofitel mm -hmm. at uh, $500 for the two nights. Okay. Yes. And so uh, the thing that I would like to strongly encourage those who are listening and have not registered, mm -hmm. the uh, registration is filling up really fast. So we are closing registration uh, at the end of this month, the last Friday of this month. We're closing registration and already... Uh, it's filling up very fast, and so don't don't wait for the last minute, uh, expecting a, a place to be uh, open for them to come. You know, people will call me last minute and say, "Kameli, mm -hmm. you know, you were my friend and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, please, I, I need to get in." They would be very disappointed yeah. because there's just limited space. Mm -hmm. uh, don't wait for the last minute. Book early. Mm -hmm. Get your place in. Get your name in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd be happy to, to confirm those uh, details with them. Okay. So why do you think um, interested people, top X, should be at the conference? It's because the speakers are going to be addressing a lot of uh, questions and concerns that they currently have. Um, this pandemic is a different beast. No one planned for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, no one had a uh, business continuity plan prepared for this one. We, we got BCPs for cyclones, earthquakes, tsunamis, mm. but not for a pandemic. And this pandemic has lasted us the past 12 months, and who knows how much longer it's going to take us. And so it is at this conference that the speakers will be addressing those questions. They will... Uh, talk about what's happened and what's going to happen. And so we, what we're doing, as has been happening in the past, is a program that's called Pigeon Hole. And that Pigeon Hole is sponsored by Vodafone Fiji Limited. Very expensive for us to host. We are very grateful to the Vodafone uh, company 
uh, Fiji uh, Limited for stepping in and uh, paying for it and hosting it for us. Mm. And so the Pigeon Hall will allow everyone who's attending mm -hmm. to be able to send a question to the uh, convener. So we will have conveners who will be coordinating uh, the, the speeches, the presentation by the speakers, and also the questions by the participants. So because the participants or the delegates can use the Pigeon Hall facility to ask a question, mm -hmm. they don't have to expose themselves to stand up and be exposed. And, you know, our Fijian culture, mm. uh, we are always very passive. Yeah. We don't like to be seen in the wrong light and all. The Pigeon Hall gives them an opportunity to still remain anonymous, mm -hmm. but still ask their questions. Mm -hmm. And so the convener, will, and so not only do they ask the question, if there is 12, 18, 20 people who are asking the same question, the Pigeon Hall will summarize it for them, and so they ask it as one question rather than 20 questions at d different times. And so that's uh, the benefit of artificial intelligence that Vodafone uh, Fiji Limited has introduced. But they, they've always supported us in the past, mm -hmm. but this year they are paying for it in addition to hosting it and supporting it. So we're grateful to Vodafone for that. Excellent. So how will it benefit uh, the general public, I mean, the people of Fiji, the top, top X uh, conference, do you think? Well, because it is a paid session, it's a closed session. Mm -hmm. And so we will have all the media partners. FBC is going to be part of it, mm -hmm. uh, both radio and TV. And we have our print media people, Fiji Times and Fiji Sun. They will be reporting snippets. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, if uh, there are people who are not members of FCF and they want to ask questions post topics, mm -hmm. I would be happy to meet with them and answer any questions that they have, uh, just so that you know we everyone benefits from this one. King Solomon once said, "As iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. so must we sharpen one another." Okay. And so that's that's our objective is. As the Honorable Prime Minister had said uh, in the past, leave no one behind. Eh? Thank you. Okay, so you have a theme. Can you tell us about uh, the theme of uh, Top X uh, Conference? I believe it's uh, Resilient Businesses Ready for Tomorrow, 2030, hashtag Top X Speaks. Yes, thank you. Now, the word resilient business talks about businesses that, uh, that can withstand or can recover quickly after a difficult condition. In the past, we've always been quick to recover, uh, recover from cyclones, tsunamis, and all that stuff. Okay, I have to interject. Uh, my apologies, uh, Kameli. We've just run out of time, but we'll come back to that uh, in a minute. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Be sure to stay with us. FM, only the classic hits. I'm Louise Kaunisela. My guest is from the Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation, the CEO, Kameli Mbatiweti. And uh, we had to go into a break, but uh, you were explaining to us about the theme of TopX, which is uh, Resilient Businesses Ready for Tomorrow, 2030, hashtag TopX Speaks. Thank you, uh, Louise. Louise, uh, the word resilient business, as I alluded to much earlier, talks about businesses that are able to withstand or bounce back uh, rather quickly after difficult conditions. And so in the past, Fijians, as the Honorable Prime Minister has always mentioned, uh, B Fijians are very resilient people mm -hmm. because we are able to always bounce back from a cyclone after a cyclone or if there's a tsunami or an earthquake, uh, Fijians are quite resilient. But this is a different beast this pandemic. Um, hmm. it, uh, no one has, as I alluded to earlier, written a business continuity plan for it. No one knew how long it was going to last for. And so because we now have had 12 months of uh, data experience uh, 
uh, after the pandemic, uh, well, in the middle of the pandemic, we are able to now draw some conclusions that we can forecast uh, into the future. And so uh, the uh, theme will set the tone for everyone and the speakers will be speaking to the theme and speak specifically to different sectors, uh, what was experienced in the past, what is currently uh, happening and what is going to happen in the future that they would uh, try and forecast. Excellent. So you said top X will consist of constructive dialogue, mm. exchange. So mm. what uh, will constructive discussion be based upon at the conference? I know you've explained a few, but maybe some yes. more. A lot will center around the theme, business re resilience, and how can businesses learn from other businesses, like I, I uh, earlier uh, mentioned that King Solomon said, as iron sharpens iron, so mm -hmm. must we sharpen one another. Mm -hmm. That's the sharp sharpening uh, uh, experience that's going to go to. So a lot will center around the theme, Resilient Business Ready for Tomorrow 2030, uh, what has been learned in the past 12 months, and what is useful for them going forward that they can try and take back and try and uh, implement. So. Mm -hmm. There are some businesses that did well, which su surprises us. And so we have asked them to speak on their experience. Okay. How have they done well? Mm -hmm. um, you know, during March, uh, we used to receive a lot of calls, a lot of questions. You know, we, we are struggling in exporting this. Uh, our manufacturing has gone from hero to zero. Uh, and... Uh, so we had to ring around, we had to email our, our counterparts in the Pacific Islands and ask them, uh, are you interested in buying uh, these uh, products that we manufacture here? Because now they don't have those products coming in from China. Right. Uh, well, that has stopped for the Pacific Islands. It was still, uh, shipping was still moving around. Mm. And so we had to call around a bit and make some inquiries. And some of the uh, countries did respond, and so we just pointed them to our members, and then we said, you guys continue the conversation, we get off the boat uh, at this juncture. And so they, they've spoken, and I spoke to one of them over the weekend, and uh, uh, this um, manufacturer who uh, pivoted into export mm. said uh, it worked very well for them. And so that's another advantage of becoming a member of Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation. Mm. It's the power of numbers, the, the, the ability to, to, to use that power to go and influence others to consider uh, the things that if you did it on your own, mm -hmm. you'd be fighting a battle on your own. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, really interesting to know that, uh, you know, FCEF, uh, you actually called the people and inquired and uh, got really positive feedback. I mean, uh, getting that uh, person to be able to still export. Mm. So how did you convince them? <laughs> oh, we just spoke. Uh, so I, I, I need to take a step back. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, we are a member also of PIPSO. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's a uh, Pacific Island uh, private sector organization. So just like FCEF is for Fiji, mm -hmm. PIPSO is for the region, for all the Pacific Island island countries. I get it. So just like when we become a member of them, we represent, we bring all our employers into their database, into their platform. And so it's during these difficult times mm. that we reach out to our Pacific Island uh, colleagues mm. and we ask them for assistance and they said, you know what, we're willing to do this, we're willing to buy this, buy this if the price is right. Mm -hmm. So we said, you know what, we we introduce you, we introduce, mm. and we get off the boat. You guys continue the discussions. And so mm. we are reliably informed that some of those discussions have gone very well. Excellent. So mm. well, what kinds of um, export, uh, like uh, vegetables or food or something? Oh, you'd or be clothes. surprised. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. Some were mm. livestock. Oh, yeah, Some okay. were livestock. Things that in the past never went that way. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, there were some livestock, there were some processed uh, meat, 
mm-hmm. that were also uh, exported. That uh, initially that processed meat was very cheap, so it, the price dropped significantly in Fiji. Mm-hmm. But once the export kicked off, uh, these organizations were able to uh, uh, raise their prices up because now it's a supply and demand. Eh? Excellent. Yeah, and so uh, good for them. We're happy. They are our members. They benefit. We tick our boxes. See? So, I mean, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, Absolutely. you know, there's, um, there's uh, like my grandmother used to say, uh, no such uh, thing as impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, good job. I mean, for you, I mean, that's why it's good to be a member of FCEF. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, mm. then. So, what are you hoping to achieve after the discussions with participants at the end of the top executive conference? that we have addressed their concerns and questions that they brought to the conference. And we will find out because each night we will have a cocktail before dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's during these cocktails that we move around mm. and we will hear feedback. And so we will also have, through the pigeonhole facility, also a evaluation where they give us feedback on what worked well, what did not work too well, and what are some suggestions. So for us, as long as we have addressed those concerns, uh, that we have achieved our objective. Excellent. Uh, I mean, it sounds really good. I mean, it's always good to have feedback and, of course, uh, you know, networking. Mm. Yeah, excellent. Mm. On uh, Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Louise Carnicella and my guest, uh, the CEO from the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, Kameli Mbatiweti. It's uh, great talking to you. I mean, uh, you are really just uh, revealing information which I think is really important for the country. And uh, just my next quest- question again on topics. How do you plan to reset business back to normal with Top X 2021, despite all the recent challenges? Challenges uh, will always be part of any business. And so that is why we have business continuity plans uh, as a backup to try and address uh, any of the difficulties that the organizations are faced with. And so um, it's, it's a matter of being able to assess what the risks are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and based on what your assessment is, you are able to reset your uh, business back to normal. Some businesses will reset very quickly yeah, because they have been on the front foot uh, for quite some time. Uh, some of them will take some time uh, and it all is based on the risks that they need to assess and to make a decision based on that. Okay, so you said you'll conclude uh, the Top X program with a discussion on tourism, specifically about the borders reopening and its impacts. What do you hope to get out of this? Now, this person who's going to be, and this at least two or three of them who's going to speak on this topic. They are very seasoned hospitality industry people. And so um, they'll talk about what has been their experience and what they would forecast based on the experiences of the island countries that are opening now. They will share what the experience is. So some of them, especially this particular season speaker, he's got a uh, a, a resort in that country uh, that's here also in Fiji. And so they do share information. And so he will share what are some of the learnings uh, to prepare the hospitality industry people for when the borders do open. The fact remains that Most, if not all, the businesses depend on the hospitality industry, either directly or indirectly. I mean, you know, you say, what about the hardware shops? Yes, the the hotels and resorts, they do conduct uh, 
capital expense they do spend capital expenditure on renovation and also that's where they buy their hardware from Fiji uh, and so they would buy their food from the uh, retail outlets they would when they renovate their shops and uh, their resorts and hotels the TVs and all mm -hmm. they buy it from our local retailers so everyone directly or indirectly depends on the hospitality industry uh, to reopen so we are really um, praying hard that the uh, announcement would come very shortly uh, where we will determine this is going to be the date when we're going to re uh, reopen the borders mm -hmm. so that the hospitality people first they can plan backwards on how are they going to prepare and so this seasoned uh, speaker is going to speak about some of those what to do things to prepare for when the borders do reopen. Okay, so how long do you think it will take and how do you think we can get the economy back into shape again? How long it'll take? I would think it'll take at least three months to six months mm -hmm. at the most. That's just my wild uh, guess. Wild guess, yeah. Yep, but because uh, it will involve training, mm -hmm. it will involve maintenance of the air conditions that have been turned off for this time. Mm -hmm. It will mean uh, maintenance of some th some stuff, uh, and just preparing the whole team to get them ready for the session. And so that's that's the first question. Sorry, what was your second question? So, like, how do you think we can get the economy back into shape again, and how long do you think it will take? Thank you. Good question. Um, you know, everything is key on everyone being vaccinated mm -hmm. and so there are a lot of rumors going around that it's the triple six for the christians the christians think uh, it's the triple six and uh, all that stuff uh, but you know we ought to convince everyone mm -hmm. to be vaccinated i think there's a certain number 85 percent or or whatever the number is of the population in fiji that needs to be vaccinated before there is any confidence that the uh, countries would have to come to Fiji. So as long as we remain stubborn and not endeavor to uh, be vaccinated, mm -hmm. then we will always remain closed to the outer world. As I alluded to earlier, mm -hmm. we ought to get everybody, uh, open our borders quickly because yes. most, if not all, the uh, private sector organizations in Fiji, we are dependent on the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. And it's only the Australian and the New Zealand uh, citizens coming into our country that can help us to revive uh, our country. I am told, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not too sure how true this is, I am told that the Australians and the New Zealanders just can't wait for the borders to open. Yeah, can yeah. imagine, sure. As soon as the borders open, mm -hmm. they'll be on the first flight. And guess which flight will that be? Fiji Airways, of course. Oh, obviously, you know, And then yes. uh, the others can can join in. But all, all of those are key mm. to us reviving the economy. Mm -hmm. But until and unless we all get vaccinated, mm -hmm. we will always remain closed mm -hmm. and we will almost suffer the consequences of remain being being closed. Yes, uh, that's so true. So is there anything else that uh, you'd like uh, to add on before we finish off, uh, Mr. Batiweti? But maybe about uh, small businesses, uh, how are we doing at the moment? The, we are fortunate that the government uh, gave out concessionary loans last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, concessionary loans. And so it was to the tune of $7,000 to the um, micro. Yeah, micro. And... Uh, $14,000 to the small uh, and uh, $21,000 to the medium. Those were significant mm -hmm. and uh, they were somewhere close to $50 million that government pumped back into the economy. Mm. That was great mm -hmm. uh, because what it meant was that that money came back into our country and not only did it come back into our country, it allowed the micro, small, medium enterprise uh, enterprises to st start generating some finances for themselves. 
So there were, I mean, I think the Honorable uh, Attorney General uh, talked about uh, the guy in uh, uh, Intercon that side. He, he used to be a chef uh, and pastry chef, and he's pivoted. Making money. Making money. Yeah, see, there you mm -hmm. go. Well, unfortunately, this is uh, the end now of Speak Your Mind, and I thank you so much uh, for your company coming into the show today and uh, telling us about, uh, well, topics and uh, your experience uh, mm -hmm. in everything. So from the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, the CEO, Kameli Mbatiweti Vinaka Vakalevu, and uh, may you have a wonderful Top X uh, conference yep. and on Speak Your Mind. This is Gold FM, only the classic hits. And uh, I'll talk to you again next week. In the meantime, take care, look after yourself and each other. Nisamo de manda.